Throughout America in recent years, the trolley has made a tremendous comeback. It's called light rail transit. In Portland, Oregon, light rail, first conceived in the late 70s, was finally completed in 1986. This system throughout design and construction has been called the Banfield Light Rail Project. Now, in operation, it's called MAX for short, for Metropolitan Area Express. There had been some 14,000 signatures generated in the neighborhood in which the system would be built, but they didn't want that light rail system built there. So there was a significant, organized, strong community opposition. We didn't like it. We didn't want it. So it'd be too noisy. It isn't, though. From downtown Portland, the system runs over the Willamette River, across the Steel Bridge, through East Portland, along the Banfield Freeway, out across the five and a half mile East Burnside Corridor, and then into downtown Gresham. There was an awful lot of people against it to begin with. And you talk to them now, and boy, we can't do without it. Bryant brought our firm in as a subconsultant to Bechtel Civil and Minerals as a special right-of-way consultant. Fred Gleck was hired by our community relations team, but to be part of the design effort on the overall Banfield project or the rail project uh, in East Multnomah County, specifically in the Burnside area where it goes through the residential area. And the reason for that is that we needed to have a person with technical abilities that could relate with us to the individual property owner. Glick and Associates put together site-specific plans for every one of the 540 properties in the residential area on Burnside. We attended and helped coordinate neighborhood meetings, community-wide meetings, uh, and individual block meetings to deliver to the public a visual concept of what they could expect to happen. That's a, a rail line going to, right down the middle of a street, which heretofore had been a small, quiet uh, neighborhood street. We went through a process of bringing together a design team, but also bringing on board community relations people who would be out being able to uh, communicate with the, the people that were most directly impacted by the project, and those right along the alignment. People really look with a lot of chagrin about changes in their neighborhood. Um, most people like to be left alone and uh, didn't look with great favor at a huge mass transit system coming through their neighborhood. Construction of this portion of the corridor needed to be coordinated very carefully with the property owners. Uh, whatever was intended to occur needed to be explained to them. Uh, in a sense, we really educated each property owner about the design and development process that was about to occur. It's at the decision of the property owners. We, we worked with them trying a block-by-block -block concept so it's not a crazy patchwork with every piece of property. These are some guidelines. So Fred Glick would sit down with a community relations person in the front room of the house and sort of draw the front of their property. In some cases, we had to take a few feet. And in taking a few feet legally, it's as big a job as taking the whole works, taking the whole house. We worked hard and close with uh, lots of different neighborhood groups and associations. Uh, Hazelwood, Rockwood community groups, for example, out here on the east side were extremely active in, in providing input into how this project was going to come about and what it was going to look like. And in addition to that, we had private citizens that come in that were not associated with any particular organization or group that wanted to be heard and had legitimate concerns that needed to be addressed. We um, broke 540 properties and about six and a half miles of, of residential property, basically into small groups and we met with the group in a public meeting format and then we made appointments to come to their homes, talk to them in their front rooms and we were all the time their guests. It shifted the power from the agency's power to impose something to their power to modify what we wished to do so they could live with it. As the landscape architects for the East Burnside Corridor portion of the Banfield Light Rail Project, 
our responsibilities included the definition of the right-of-way, which was a very complex task, the preservation of Douglas fir trees along the entire five and a half miles, and increasing privacy to each and every one of the homeowners. The agencies involved in the Burnside Corridor project were Multnomah County, TriMet, four utility companies, and the Oregon Department of Transportation. This is a multi-jurisdictional project, which made it even more difficult. I mean, if there was a problem, it was the gas company, it was, it was the water district, it was the fire department, or it was the city of Gresham, or it was Multnomah County, or it was the city of Portland. There were so many agencies involved in this project that trying to get an answer, even a response to a relatively simple question, could be an awesome all-day-long process. Each of these agencies, before our involvement, had no plan about how to approach the reconstruction of East Burnside relative to this pedestrian right-of-way bordering all these private properties. Once we established our strategy, they each were able to see very clearly what would happen with regard to their own jurisdictional responsibilities. The location of, of the line was selected and, and Burnside was the ultimate corridor that was selected. Once that was done, then there were lots of technical issues that needed to be resolved in terms of uh, placement of the tracks and accommodating uh, surface traffic for cars and trucks and buses. And then creating an environment that people could live with. Multnomah County felt very strongly that the land around a transit station was a unique resource. There's only so much of it. It really needed to be used wisely and to tie into the, uh, the transit line. And to that end, they wanted a new ordinance, um, new land development ordinances that would uh, ensure as much as possible that that happened. In many ways, the Banfield light rail project is a land use project as much as it is a transportation project. The decision to withdraw an urban freeway, the decision to select right, light rail, the decision to select the specific alignment were as much land use decisions as they were transportation decisions. And the advocacy of the project by many local jurisdictions was from a land use perspective. When con construction finally occurred, people began to realize that it's happening and it's here. Then we had some, the real problems were people coming home to a driveway that wasn't there anymore, that was there when they left this morning. The problems revolved around Multnomah County's needing to be concerned about the welfare of its citizens, TriMet's need to build the light rail project on schedule, and the utility companies need to relocate uh, about 10 and a half miles of utility poles. We had five, um community relations specialist who worked with the homeowners on Burnside, each and every one on a face-to-face -face basis, a very personal basis in which they went into their homes and discussed how the homeowners wanted their front yards to look, whether they wanted retaining walls. We built sidewalks, we put in new mailboxes, we built driveway cuts, we built in some cases driveways. We did a lot of landscaping. We were very careful about not uh, harming any shrub or rose bush that a particular homeowner uh, uh, was uh, concerned about or was very fond of. They did consult with us on the driveway out here before they poured the driveway and wanted to know which would be the best way to angle the driveway. And uh, I told them that uh, I had a motor home and I would appreciate it if they angled it the way they did now out there. It's, it's angled so that we can back the motor home in and put it on the pad on the side of the house. We worked with every property owner very closely to inform them what changes needed to occur in the right of way. Uh, we inevitably lost some, some trees. In many cases, duck fir trees had to be removed. These are 80 to 120 foot evergreen beauties. We therefore attempted wherever possible to preserve these trees uh, as the inherent character of the corridor. People understood that you could use a rail line to shape development in a way that was good. The transit station area planning program was the mechanism 
that the local governments along the line use to understand the development potential of the line and then to translate that into specific zoning requirements, implementation plans along the line to try to capture that, that potential. One of the most important factors is design. How do you deal with that? How do you allow one thing to happen and yet have the least effect on what's there? And you can accomplish a lot through design of what goes in. And so uh, the county hired Fred uh, Glick to come in and start working on how that would happen. For the neighborhood, uh, I think the impact turned out to be less than anybody anticipated because the, the landscaping that occurred after construction was finished really complemented the neighborhood. And I think the landscaping, interestingly enough, will probably be one of the landmarks that TriMix should be very, very proud of. important to understand that some of the intricacies of the funding caused us to use transit money to build the highway, build the freeway. Uh, it may be the only interstate freeway section of the country that was rebuilt by the use of transit dollars. I think the cost was well worth it, I'll tell you, I really do. I think that it's going to pay off in the long run, I really do. I think it's going to be uh, the whole city of Portland will benefit from it. Not only Portland, but Gresham and all the outlying areas will benefit from this, you know. The riders must like it because there's 50% more of them than we thought there would be. Uh, the general community seems to like it because it's shot TriMet's public opinion rating to the highest point it's been. Um, so I think the Banfield is a, is a success story across the board. I think the street plannings are effective. I think it's, it's going to be a beautiful street. Being in a wheelchair, how can I not like the lifts? I mean, I, I like the idea of hopping on TriMet and going downtown or going to Gresham. I hope it will be a success. It had better be. Since the light rail took effect, it has picked up our business. Like normally, January and February would be real low months since, the, uh, since we had the holiday season, but it's been pretty good. It looks a lot better. They really did a good job with the sidewalks and the trees. Everything was done to perfection. This project has become a great example of how thousands of people in the community, both professional and, and citizens alike, uh, can work cooperatively to complete such a, a huge project.